Head Leon says, Knock, knock. Huh? Who is this? SWAT. Huh? SWAT? Yeah, I'm SWAT. You know, signing warrants, arresting terrorists. Sir, you're in my way. Thank you, Head Leon, for becoming my eighth patron. All right, let's get into the video. <laughs> After a long time of waiting, we finally get the trailer. Welcome to do Rex Trailer Analysis. Now I just want to state that this video is going to be for the first gameplay trailer. Anything related to Carcosa will be put in a separate video at some time in the future, whenever we decide to find anything in the trailer that is. Alright, so the trailer opens up with an upshot, establishing that we are next to a gas station in what looks to be a city. What city you might ask? Well, if we paid attention to previous information that's been said in the past, then this city should be Los Angeles, or LA, in the state of California, US of A. I mean, come on now, those gas prices are a dead giveaway. Moving on. What's interesting about the next scene is that they come out of a SWAT truck in an alleyway, when in the previous scene that we had seen before, they were showing the front of the store. Now I'm just guessing here, but I think this signifies that we have multiple ways to get into this objective. Now my theory might fall flat on its face because you can see both red and blue team at the same time in this general area, but if we watch closely, we only see red team hop off of the back of the truck. It isn't until this scene that we notice blue team is here. They're standing on the right hand side, so maybe they circle around the building to get to red team while hugging the wall that's on the right and obviously they couldn't come from the other way because it's blocked out by a police car if we look on the right there's a no entry sign and if we just pause the video as it gets into the next scene we can see that there's an opening on the right supporting my theory here's a rough sketch of what i think this area is even talk refers to it as a site talk to tac 15 you have compromised authority to make entry on site one how copy Roger that. Now, I don't know if this means that there's multiple sites, but I just found it interesting. Before we push on, I need to point something out. Something that's interesting about this beginning clip is that I think it's two different playthroughs because if we look at this part of the clip, we see that this guy is holding a shotgun, but in the next part, he just completely disappears. Like, where'd he go? But then there's magically a guy with the battering ram, so I think this is two playthroughs that are put together. What do you guys think? I mean, originally, I thought that this guy with the battering ram was the guy with the shotgun that was in the previous scene. But upon further inspection, this guy's actually holding an MP5, and the shotgun that's on his back isn't the same shotgun as we've seen in the previous scene. The one that's on his back is actually a breaching shotgun, only used for shooting down doors. <laughs> So it's not the same person. This is why I think it's a completely different scene. So the two teams push into what looks like the back of a storage room, and then they proceed to stack up on the next door and kick the door open. This is the first time that we are introduced to the kicking option, because as far as I know, we haven't discussed a kicking option when it comes to opening doors, or at least I haven't seen it. It makes me wonder if there's any ramifications if you just decide to kick the door open. I mean, obviously the bad guys are gonna hear you, but what if the door doesn't open? Like, is it two times out of 10 that we're gonna see a broken leg? because we tried to kick a door open, and now we have to limp around the map because our leg is broken? Just curious. Well anyways, he kicks the door open and title screen, gameplay trailer. The next scene fades in, and we see SWAT officers riding in the back of a bear cat, but Void Interactive can't legally call it a bear cat, so they refer to it as a tiger. Ride the tiger. This is when the lady voice actor starts to explain what the game is, and what it's trying to accomplish. With Ready or Not, Void Interactive aims to explore what it's like to be an officer in the elite special weapons and tactics unit. If she says anything notable, I will add more of her conversation into the video later. But until then, we're just going to be looking at generally what's in the video itself. So the next scene cuts to an over the shoulder shot of a SWAT officer that's in training. Because boy, does he need it. Look at this guy. It looks like he misses both shots. Now at first glance, I couldn't tell if it was actually going through the target or not. Until I noticed that pieces of the target were flinging off. So that's the indicator that it's actually hitting. Okay. So as I previously stated in videos, 
goes. I have to wonder what this area is. Like, is it just a training area that's going to be the same as what SWAT 4 had? Basically, you're trying to go to the training course while a guy just talks to you telling you what to do and you follow through? Or is it a sort of hub where you and your friends can train and try out different gear and guns, possibly make up strategies? Or maybe it's a combination of both. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Continuing on, these next couple of scenes are fairly fast, but I'm just gonna slow them down for you. The first one is an upshot of the hotel. Somebody in the Discord actually found a location of this hotel in another game, but I'm gonna leave that one for uh, the Carcosa video. That is if it's relevant. But aside from that, there's really nothing too significant about this shot, so let's move on. The next scene is a dark and stormy night with the camera showing the first person of a SWAT officer. How do I know he's a SWAT officer? Well, because the bad guys that are in front of him are actually regular bad guys. They don't look like the paramilitary force. And you only play as SWAT when you're in single player and co-op. The SWAT officer himself appears to be wearing night vision goggles and standing in what looks like a shipping crate that's been hollowed out. I say hollowed out because normally shipping crates only have one opening. And judging how we got behind these guys because it's obvious that they haven't noticed him he had to have come from the other side so he came in crouched from the other side because the two criminals don't notice him yet and he just sits there this particular map's location has already been found a while back its streets are junction pilchar street and ferry avenue which is located on terminal island los angeles california terminal island is largely an artificial island mainly used for industrial and port related stuff but for ready or not this is basically for human trafficking at least as far as i've seen until new information comes up that's about as far as we know. The next scene is of a SWAT officer pulling shells out of his shotgun luber to reload his weapon. You know, it's very rare that we actually see games use the shotgun holder that's on the side. Normally, they get like a shotgun shell out of... I don't know, like the belt or something. I almost rarely see them use shells on the side of the shotgun. Like, it's almost always cosmetic. They also stated that you could reload the shotgun looper too, which is actually pretty cool. There's also a suspect that's zip tied in front of him. I believe he's also wearing a ski mask, and I think they're in the same general area as where that guy was standing in the shipping crate. I believe this is the same map, because there's no day and night cycle, and there is a shipping crate that's just at the top right of the screen there, and it's raining. So yeah, same map, I believe. This clip also showcases free cam which I don't think we've actually seen throughout this trailer yet. Let's move on. I believe this next one is inside the hotel. It's of a suspect walking over to his left and shooting at a SWAT officer. I'm not sure if this guy actually shot that SWAT officer because it feels like the bullet didn't actually come out of this pistol here. Like there wasn't any animation of it actually leaving the chamber. But I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe they just don't have the animations for it yet. I don't know. At first glance, I wasn't really sure as to what was actually going on in this scene because the SWAT seems to be standing there. And on the right side, there's a SWAT officer that looks like he's actually shielding his eyes, like maybe a flashbang went off and he's putting his head in his arm and it looks like he actually dropped his shield maybe that's just me but what i mean the guys on the left i believe are yelling at the suspect to get down on the ground and all that but i'm not sure what's going on on the right with the swat officer that dropped his shield and there's another officer that's like crouching in the background you can see his butt right there the next scene i'm a little unsure as to where this area is but this is the first time that we actually get to see the opti one in action and man is there a lot of bodies and I'm sure they're not criminals. So he's using the OptiWand to look around the corner. The OptiWand is also good for looking under doors. I wonder if they still call this device the OptiWand. Like this is a, you know, a new game. So I don't know if they can have the same name in this, you know, in a different game. Like, do they call it something else? I know it says eyes on the ground on the uh, top of it. So is that what it is? Like, I don't know. It definitely could be named something else. But I gotta say, this room does look interesting anywho moving on to the next scene we get another glance at the training room but it's from a different angle and we see two officers training on two different targets now i'm not sure if these are players ai or set pieces but i believe the next scene answers my question so this next scene actually reveals a lot of information because this is the first time we've actually seen a player actually have a hud on and if anyone remembers void said that they have a movement system that kind of resembles escape from tarkov where if you scroll down on the mouse your character will move significantly slower which I thought that that was really interesting, but I really didn't know how that actually worked. Previously, the developers have said in the past that these two little boxes at the bottom right are movement. I was very confused at the time, but this scene clears it up because in this scene, at the bottom right, it looks like there's more than two. And at the very end, yep. So as more boxes get added, you begin to walk faster. And the more you take away, 
you begin to walk slower. If you notice, this character begins to walk slow as it cuts into the next scene, but we're not done yet. Next to the movement box is a blue box with the word responses above it. If anyone has ever played Swap 4, then you already know what this is, but to those that haven't, then you should know that each character has a voice actor, and the voice actors have numerous lines so that you can give responses. Now, how much dialogue will they have? That is the question. So when this clip starts, the lady says this. Team up with friends to take down suspects in a cooperative mode. Basically answering the question that I had in previous scenes. I mean, look at all the devs in the training room. Billy Not Really, Ryro and Zed, Easy Street. Oh, and the bar that's underneath is apparently a stamina bar, according to Easy Street, I think it was. But I still want to know if it's a hub or just a mission. That's one question that I still have. Moving on to the next one. So about two minutes into the trailer, we finally get a glimpse at the multiplayer. And I gotta say, throughout this whole trailer there's not a whole lot of the multiplayer it's mostly just single player and co-op that gets focused on but i mean that's been void interactive's philosophy focusing on single player co-op but not forgetting about multiplayer so there's only two things that i find interesting about this clip one i believe that this guy that's actually shooting is on the paramilitary team because if we zoom in the guy that's over here kind of looks like a swat officer and two it looks like some of the maps that are in single player and in co-op are also going to be in the multiplayer but they're probably going to switch things around the maps so that it's not as linear as the ones in co-op and single player. All right, let's move on. You're placed in the boots of an officer in the city SWAT, a unit equipped with military hardware, tasked with protection, taking on high-risk situations, and bringing order to chaos. In Ready or Not, you will encounter a wide array of unique characters, all with their own stories that contribute to the narrative thread, from kingpin drug dealers, to beat cops, to school children. I know that Void is going to have some cutscenes, but as far as I know, they aren't going to have that many unless they say otherwise. You know, I would really like to know how they would be used if they decided to actually put them in there. Like, is it only for like the beginning mission and that's it? Or is there going to be like a video for like a specific character and we get to read their paragraph that's going on in the background? I'm not sure, but uh, curious. Like the first scene with the three officers walking down a hallway, that looks straight like a cutscene. Whereas the next ones look like they actually could be bios of the characters. Character. Like if you go into the menu and you want to look up what's going on with these characters. That's kind of how it looks to me, but I don't know. Well, let's move on to the next thing, eh? Collaborating with law enforcement, Void Interactive's goal is to create an authentic and accurate tactical experience with Ready or Not. You and your team are able to customize their personnel, gear, and weaponry to appropriately fit each mission's objectives. Armor can be customized to suit your playstyle, and with bullet-mapped interactions, the right selection may be imperative to survival. So let's break this down. In the beginning, she says collaborating with law enforcement. What this basically means is that not only did real officers coach the developers, but that they were able to actually get the officers to do motion capture with them. So anytime you see a character reloading or moving around, that's actually a SWAT officer doing it in real time. She also mentions the customization that'll be in the game. Now, I just want to say that it's not going to be as in-depth as Escape from Tarkov or Ground Branch, but it's definitely a good variety and will still be fun to play around with. Like you're going to be able to customize your weapons to a certain extent with attachments depending on how much points or carry weight you have. It's a bit of a complex system but if anybody has ever played SWAT 4 then you should get it. And of course there's different types of armor but that also depends on carry weight. And yeah I think that's all I'm going to say about this. Let's push on to the next one. The one thing that's kind of frustrating about this next one is that he doesn't aim down sights. And I have to wonder if it's just him or maybe he doesn't want to show off the sights of this particular gun. I can't really say for sure but what I can say is that I have seen this room before it was actually featured in some of the uh pictures that were posted on the twitter i believe i remember that the picture only showed the sadistic on the wall but as we can see it says sadistic ego i'm still a little unsure if this is the back of the anal staircase club but uh yeah still pretty interesting all right let's move on the next scene shows a radio menu and something that's interesting about it is that it actually lines up with where you have the items on your character let's see the top three are exiting the menu the three on the right are a stinger a pistol and another stinger the ones at the bottom are i believe a flashbang breaching shotgun and c2 gas the three on the left i believe are one flashbang smg i think that's an mp5 and c2 plastic explosive for blowing open doors at least i think that's what that is i could be wrong though underneath the radio menu there seems to be a mag count for each weapon looks like one mag for the smg 24 shells for the breaching shotgun and four mags for the pistol there also seems to be weight because of all the gear he's carrying i'm sure it affects the way that he walks now the question is 
why is this crossed out? I find that very interesting. So he chooses the stinger and opens the door slightly and tosses it in. This is when we realize we're in some sort of motel. And I'm over here wondering, who only brings one Mac for the SMG? Oh, it's not a regular SMG, it's it's like a it's like a paintball SMG. Did I mention that Ready or Not seems to be the type of game that has tiny icons when you get close to objects? Well, if I didn't, it does. But anyway, so he pushes into the room and tells the suspect to drop the weapon, and I really dislike the way they handled this. Because as he's putting the pistol down, he's aiming the gun at you. <laughs> like, if I saw that happening, I would have just shot him. I really hope that they fix that. Like, instead of just him trying to put it down slowly, maybe just have him drop it. At least that's just my thoughts. It was a nice animation, though, but I really... I really don't like how the pistol was aiming at you when that was going when that was happening. Jump cutting to the same area. Yeah, like we're gonna be detained for long. So the next scene features the cuffing mechanic that we've seen on Void Interactive's media outlets. But this time it's with a white supremacist, just judging by the swastika that's painted on the back of his jacket. Rebels reject belters. It's what it says on the back of his jacket, but I have no idea if that means anything. I tried looking online, but I didn't see anything that looked relevant. But maybe you'll have better luck than I do. I really like the way that this cuffing animation looks. You know, this guy kind of looks like he would be a part of that one biker game that the one voice actor mentioned that one time. What do you guys think? The next scene is of different officers using a more aggressive approach on a different room but on the same map against the same suspects or at least that's what I think. These next three scenes are actually connected. So it shows the police side and then it shows the bad guy side. We get to see the replay viewer in action here. And then it shows the police side again but he actually kills the bad guy. This player also had a HUD on. So not only can we see the movie mechanic again, but the HUD also gives me reason to believe that this particular part is single player. Because when he looks at the SWAT officer, we don't see any name tags pop up. We can also see when he looks at the officer, his responses that are at the bottom right change. Whereas earlier we saw with co-op, they didn't change when they looked at other officers. It could also be that this guy is gold leader, just judging by the color of the box. All right, moving on. Up next, it looks like we're back to looking at the multiplayer. And again, it's in that one shipping yard that we talked about earlier in the video. It seems like these players are just outright shooting each other. It makes me wonder if this game is just TDM because of how chaotic it looks. The multiplayer player definitely looks fun though. The next scene is also multiplayer. It's a SWAT officer tasing a paramilitary guy, and I believe this is VIP. I don't remember how the VIP mode actually works, but it, I think it's one of the modes where, like, if you tase a bad guy and you cuff him, he gets more points because you cuffed him instead of just outright killing him. At least if, I think I think that was VIP from SWAT 4. I don't remember. Can't say I've really played the multiplayer for SWAT 4, so I'm a little unsure on that part. Might have been barricaded. I don't remember. But anyways, I think. I think this room is the same one that had the sadistic ego sign that was on the wall, which gives to the idea that maps from multiplayer and single player co-op will be shared, but slightly altered for balancing, just like how SWAT 4 did it. Very interesting. Alright, let's move on. The next scene takes place in what I believe is the hotel, but basically what happens is that a SWAT officer lobs a flashbang across the room where I believe a suspect is and... His eyes won't be working anytime soon. Looks like this next scene is also taking place in the shipping containers map, but this time around it's actually from the perspective of a uh, co-op and single player point of view. Because these suspects aren't paramilitary, and it looks like the SWAT is actually just mopping up at the end of a mission. At least that's what it seems like to me. So once again they show off the replay viewer cam, and they also tell us that we can turn off the HUD if we don't really want it on. Also I believe the guy that's cuffing this person right here is gold lead, just judging by the gold line that's on his back. I'm not sure what the gold lead actually does i'm not sure if he commands both teams or each team gets a gold lead or i don't know that's an interesting thing to talk about in a later video all right moving on the next one is of a training room where an officer is tactically moving in to clear out targets notice he only shoots the guy with the gun i have to wonder how big this training room is because every scene with the training room just seems to be a different area are there multiple training rooms or is it all in one big map that's a pretty good question right there. All right, moving on. So the next one is of them showing off the drone, which I think is cool, but I imagine the drone is going to be really loud. So won't the bad guys just shoot it down or what? But it looks like they're actually testing it out in the shipping containers area. Although it looks like there's a different time of the day, but I can't really tell if it's just a light or 
or not like it still looks dark but it looks like a light dark you know i could see a guy like walking out in the distance right there at the bottom left it says 135 rpm which i'm guessing that's how fast it's going right now and uh the, the one in the middle is from the pilot so you're the one that's piloting it the other one is um from the ground it's how far it is you know from here to there and yeah that's pretty much all i got to say about this scene oh Looks like we get a better look at the gas station. It definitely looks a lot bigger than I initially thought. But basically what's happening here is that the guy leans in and lobs in a stinger. He pulls out a gun that kind of looks like a grease gun. I don't know what the heck that is. But I'm sure you gun nuts down in the comments will tell me eventually, right? And then poof. Kind of a lackluster explosion before the next scene. But I believe there is a second explosion after the initial blast. I think I actually saw that in a different scene before. Before we move on to the next scene, there is a guy that is actually standing behind the vending machine that is in front of us but if he didn't see that stinger then he basically ate that all right moving on so the next scene i thought was actually kind of funny because he wedges the door and if you don't know what a wedge is basically it's a door stopper so you can't get in or out the only way to get rid of it is by using a multi-tool but anyways he wedges the door and then he proceeds to try and unlock the door <laughs> like what why would you anyways so looking at the icons displayed on the door obviously the one that he's looking at is the wedge icon the one to the right is for the optiwan for looking under the door this icon is for the multi-tool so you can unlock the door for a more stealth approach. This icon is for opening the door fast or slow. And this icon is for the C2 charge if you just want to blow it open. Alright, let's move on. The next scene looks like it's in the lobby of the hotel. With two officers moving up on a perp and taking him down while in the replay viewer. So again, we're back at the shipping container area with a guy wearing night vision goggles and reloading his weapon and firing. Now, if anybody remembers that I had said that I had seen a 30 second clip that wasn't meant for the public, well, I had mentioned a part where he's reloading and there's a mag icon attached to his palm as he's reloading. This is what we're seeing here. And looking back at this, when he pulls out the mag, the icon looks like it's empty, but when he puts in another one, it shows that it's full. So that's an interesting mechanic that I don't think I've actually seen any other games do at least not that I can think of but yeah pretty interesting moving on you know what's really cool having the ability to flip on your night vision goggles or flip them off and turn off the power and move under the cover of darkness that's pretty cool that's basically what they just showed off right here after that, they show off a SWAT officer with a ladder and another SWAT officer with the battering ram. And if I remember correctly, you don't actually come equipped with the battering ram or a ladder. They just have it like sitting on the truck for you to grab. Or at least that's how I remember them talking about it. I could be wrong though. Well, pushing on. The next scene is where we get to experience what the sniper is like. So the way that the sniper works is that you pull out your little tablet in game and control where the sniper shoots, but the snipers are set in certain positions. So if there's no suspects in that window that he's looking through, then he won't be able to shoot anything. So snipers are only so useful and they'll call you up on the radio when they see something. First, I had thought that the person that was controlling the sniper was just a bad shot, but after looking at it over and over again, I came to a different conclusion. Is this trying to tell us that this is some sort of scare tactic? Like I'm over here like, there's no way he misses this shot unless he's doing it on purpose. This is why I'm thinking it's one of those scenarios where it's like, the next one's gonna be for your head. So give up and put the gun down. That or maybe he is just a bad shot. I don't know, but I really hope it's the alternative because that actually sounds like a pretty cool tactic. I gotta say. There also seems to be a white supremacist holding a hostage and that missed sniper shot tells us that we can shoot through walls. All right, moving on. The next couple of scenes feature SWAT officers wearing gas masks and lobbing in CS gas. CS gas is essentially tear gas. It'll definitely have an effect on the suspect or anybody without a gas mask causing them to cough really sporadically so uh wear a gas mask if you decide to use cs gas the next scene looks like a couple of swat officers that are pushing into the gas station but for some reason this character seems to be stunned he was probably hit by a friendly flash grenade or something whether it was on accident i don't know all right moving on cutting to the next scene it seems like we have two swat officers that are actually moving up to cuff a maid I believe that is. And it kind of looks like they're just trying out the animation because they kind of just like stumbled into it like um, as if they're just trying out the animations for the first time. But yeah, let's move on. What happens next is basically a in-game cutscene, so to speak. So the scene starts out with an upshot looking at the hotel that we've actually been seeing the insides of throughout this entire gameplay trailer. And then it switches to a SWAT team that's in the back of a SWAT truck and they're riding to the destination of where the hotel is. They hop off the back, and we see blue team coming in from the left side here. 
We can actually see the name tags of the people that are getting off the vehicle. We got Easy Street and Barracuda. Yeah, it looks like three people from blue team that are on the left and five people from red team that are on the right. So they stack up on the door. Use the wand. And then a guy uses the Opti wand to look underneath the door. Mirror gun ready. There's a lot of them. And they all have guns. There's a lot of them and they all have guns. So he raises up the shield. The guy on the right opens the door and another guy behind the riot guy tosses in a nine bang. I think, I think that's what it's called. They start pushing into the hotel, which might I say looks pretty gorgeous. But one thing to note is that there are different color shotgun shells in this looper. Before in the beginning of the video, they were yellow and in this one, they're red. So this is just a subtle way of telling us that there are different ammo types. All right, moving on. So now they're running down a hallway and this is probably the best example for the movement mechanic because he's walking fast and then he slows to a halt and then he puts it back up so he can walk a little faster. And then the scene cuts to the hotel again, but this is in a different part it looks like they're having a gunfight with a couple of uh latino looking guys the guy pulls out his mac to check to see if it's still full as a swat officer comes running around the corner and he takes one to the face yeah i've noticed that some of these guys don't actually aim down sights which is kind of uh annoying to me but maybe that's just i don't know maybe that's just the way that they play I don't know. The next scene is of two officers training in the training room, and they're actually using that lean feature that actually looks pretty, pretty good. But I mean, motion capture, so obviously it's gonna look good. Still in the training room, this clip is showing off the C2 plastic explosive where they stick it to the door and three, two, one, blammo. And then the lady goes on to say how dynamic the doors are. Players may open them regularly, kick them in, or incrementally swing them open in order to insert a grenade or engage a target. The one thing that I actually found surprising about this trailer is the fact that they're going to have traps in the game. Because I remember them swearing up and down that they were going to have traps. But seeing this in here, it's just like, you lying sons of bitch. I definitely welcome this feature though. I think the idea of disarming traps is actually pretty cool. Alright, moving on. Just a second before the clip starts, you can actually see the character calling in the down civilian, showing off that mechanic. So basically, if you want to get all the points for single player and co-op missions, all you have to do is pick up every weapon and call in every body that you see for that 100%. In these next couple of scenes, the lady talks about how the maps are going to be big and claustrophobic, and honestly, that's just expected from a SWAT game. So I'm glad that they're going to do that kind of thing. In these next couple of scenes, the lady basically talks about how suspects and civilians can be unpredictable in their nature. You have to move cautiously as you travel through the map, because you never know what to expect. The next scene, the lady talks about bullet penetration, so I'm just gonna let her take it away. Projectile types and velocity simulation put a spin on the already raised stakes. Bullets will penetrate through surfaces based on thickness, material, and speed. I talked about this earlier, but this just confirms that we can actually shoot through walls. So the next scene basically features the main menu for the game. Now this is obviously subject to change, but this part right here, it actually zooms on the first clue that we get for Carcosa, at least one that we can see visually. And then it switches over to the multiplayer and you can see a guy with a shotgun running in and then another guy pulls out his pistol and he starts firing at someone, which I think we've actually seen this part in the beginning and then it shows a bunch of other guys running in basically this part of the video she says that they're not going to talk about multiplayer in this gameplay trailer so they're gonna wait until maybe at a later date but yeah but then we actually see the main menu itself again like you can actually see look at we got single player multiplayer co-op extras news settings exit and then we see the server menu all of them say void dedicated except for one that says join for trailey benches and then we see the maps so we got geo nightclub Wendelly hills hotel Port Hogan and Gas. So I'm guessing that these are the names of the maps. And we also have Co-op, VIP, and TDM for some of the modes. And then the last part of the video, they just talk about how you can mod the maps. And that's pretty interesting for somebody that likes to do mods on, uh, you know, video games. I'm not that type of person though, because I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So this video definitely took a while to make. Overall, I thought that the gameplay trailer was good for what it was. I think it's great for someone who doesn't actually know anything about the game. It's very informative for those types of people. But for me, for someone that's actually been following the game a lot, I would have preferred just raw gameplay just to see how, you know, everything goes through just on a mission, you know? But I understand why they did this. There was definitely a lot of bugs in this trailer. And the animations were kind of wonky, like the head not staying attached to the bodies. And there also was a distinct lack of gore which i think is going to be added at a later date but yeah all the bugs and the wonkiness will be dealt with by the time the game comes out and you'll think to yourself whoa that's a lot of wheat well i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye